three is myths, legends, and good yarns. So first up, we have Max. Yes, my fact for myths and legends is the hands resist him. Spurious spine chiller or legitimately life-threatening. Uh, the Hands Resist Him is a painting created by Bill Stoneham in 1972. It depicts a young boy with a creepy doll holding a battery, both standing in front of a glass pane door or window, from inside of which you see hands pressed against the panes. In the early 70s, it was hung in the Fine Garden Gallery, Beverly Hills, California, and was reviewed favourably by the resident art critic of the Los Angeles Times. The painting was purchased soon after by John Marley, notable for his role as Jack Waltz in The Godfather, the gent who wakes up next to the severed horse head, and was found by a family on the site of an old brewery sometime after Marley's death. Allegedly, several days after the painting was installed in the family home, the young daughter reported that the doll and child could be seen to move, fight, and even leave the painting to enter the room in which it was hung. The legend goes that the family set up a motion-activated camera to capture the creepy events. Unlikely, as Marley died in 1984 when a video camera was a rarity, let alone a motion-activated one. Uh, the family reported that the characters would routinely leave the painting and menace them over the course of at least 10 years, until they could take no more and posted the painting on eBay. Um, I came up with 10 years, seeing as uh, eBay was established in 1995, and they would have probably got sick of it after 19... 85, so about 10 years, and they couldn't have posted it before the invention of eBay. Uh, the legend went viral, and the painting eventually sold for approximately $1,025 by Grand Rapids Gallery in Michigan. To date, nothing further of note has occurred, which is the end of the story, right? Urban legend doesn't really hold up, not really a fact for a podcast about facts. Well, no. The gallery eventually contacted Stoneham to relay the spine chilling tale. Stoneham posts on his own website that the legend is a fallacy and highly unlikely to be true. However, on further reflection, he recalls that the owner of the gallery from which Marley first purchased the painting, however, on further reflection, he recalls that the owner of the gallery from which Marley first purchased the painting and the art critic that reviewed it both died within a year of coming into contact with it. But I'm sure that's just a coincidence, right? Dum dum dum. <laughs> Sorry, that was really dramatic. Yeah, yeah, that is. I'll, I'll very do. Dumb, I'll do that dumb, one again. But, but did the other guy? So has everyone who's owned this painting died? Basically? No. There we go. No one else who has owned that painting. So said, basically, two people have died I, who I, haven't owned the same. Painting. I've seen the images online, and it's just, <laughs> it's really poorly photoshopped. Like they try to get it to move by highlighting various areas. Yeah. But it's the same doll in the same position. The mum reported that it came out and held a gun up to her. And, uh, it was a gun. gun in the picture. No, Stoneham said, Stoneham said, there's no gun in the picture. It was probably just the dry cell battery that the, the child is holding. It, it's a very... It, it, this painting represents... <laughs> sorry, sorry. The, sorry. This painting, so, some, someone has come in and said, okay, I don't... I, I'm not worried about the concept of a picture stepping out of the, uh, the frame... It's the fact that he's not holding the correct weapon. Yeah. That's the point of my interest. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, that's the artist. It sounds like, you know... That's the artist. <laughs> I, I, I'm hearing GLC, you know, guns don't kill people. Painting. I, I was, was going <laughs> to say, there's, there's a joke about American gun control in there. Oh. So that's... I wasn't going to include it until... I, I, the main thing about this is that it is suspected that this... The, the eBay post is legitimate. Yeah. It's a thing. But they suspect that it was just a way of trying to inflate the price, yeah, like the price by yeah. making making it a viral sensation. But further reading, and the artist himself who painted it said, actually, now that I come to think about it, two people that have been directly in contact with this painting have died within a year of seeing it. Did he kill them? I don't know. <laughs> it's a good question. I imagine if did, that did could be proved, anyone else know that those in prison. two people had died <laughs> other than him? I, I would imagine their family, friends, loved ones, oh, yes. and whatnot. Yeah. But not that I don't think they were stabbed right. to death with a dry if, cell battery. If if you're an art critic, I'm sure you don't have family. <laughs> you live alone. Families yeah. are too mainstream. That's it. Right. <laughs> um, right, Laura, you're up next. So I want to talk about some of the children's picture books that have been challenged and banned over the years. Okay, so I found a couple of examples and um, some of them I were I'm not aware of. But a lot of them are fairly well-known children's titles that are banned in certain parts of the Americas and the UK. 
So, for example, The Three Little Pigs picture book from 1989 was challenged because of the violence, but also on the grounds that the pig as food might offend the Muslim community. Little Red Riding Hood from 1983 was challenged and banned because, yes, the wolf might have ate grandma, but the challenge came because Little Red had a bottle of wine in her basket, promoting alcohol to minors. We then also have the story of Baba, the little elephant, challenged for promoting colonialism and being politically and morally offensive. Where the Wild Things Are from 1988 was challenged for having witchcraft, supernatural elements and a child that yells at its mother. My favourite one, however, is Sylvester and the Magic Pebble, which was challenged by the Illinois Police Association in 1977, because if this story were all the characters are animals, the police officers are pigs. This has been banned in parts of the United States to this day. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> well, then, hang on, isn't the... Um, do you remember that the one which has got the little apple and there's the worm that drives this apple car? It's mm. the real kid. Mm. Yeah, on, the, on all the boat. Police and their pigs as well. Oh, no, a different thing. I'm talking about thinking of that hungry caterpillar. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the Which police in that are right bastards. Be banned for obesity or something. Well, it, it's I, like, think, yeah, they, yeah, I think it was actually banned for, for promoting eating disorders. But this, I, this picture got mad. Well, it's like there's um, a kid's picture book called The King and King from 2002, and that was challenged for homosexual yeah. themes. And a parent in California was offended by the Queen being a divorcee. Fuck him. Seriously. A, <laughs> fuck that a, a person. A, a single... Mm. A and parent. A parent. You, you, Get rid of it. You would write back, wouldn't you? Just, just <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for buying the book. Dear concerned, fuck yourself. Dear concerned citizen. Um, fuck you. Well, you've also got uh, Heather Has Two Mommies from 2000, which was challenged for homosexual themes and... Promoting a dangerous and ungodly lifestyle. Well, that kind of thing is used. Though. That, that, that's edu- educational, uh, um, child educational material. That is designed for... To make it acceptable yeah. to children. Yeah, to, However. To, to, to just simply However, explain However, some parents basic. are going to say no. Yeah. You've also got The Rabbit's Wedding, which uh, access to this was restricted in 1959 at the Montgomery, Alabama Public Library because the illustration of the black buck rabbit and the white doe rabbit together was promoting integration. Oh, God, yeah. We all well, know what rabbits uh, That's do. America. They, they're a lot more... Even now, it's not so much of a big deal, but it's still... Hmm. There are so many school in committees of what has to be allowed, etc. Mm. But my personal one in all of that list is where the wild things are being banned because mm-hmm. it has a child who yells at its mother. And, and yeah. witchcraft. Well, yeah. Ironically, not banned in Salem. They love it. Does anyone remember when, uh, what should we call it, Captain Pugwash had the original name to it? Mm-hmm. Roger the Cabin Boy. Roger the Cabin Boy. Roger the Cabin Boy standards. You're, you're, you're a fan of QI. They did this. I know, they I know. But I'm sorry, but I remember them. And, it was and I remember them the being podcast, there originally, because I used to have them on video cassette, so I'm fairly sure it must be true. <laughs> but I, I still like it now, anyway. Okay. You but just yeah. like Roger the Cabin Boy. I do like Roger the Cabin Boy. Uh, Seaman Stains. What was the other ones? <laughs> Big Willy. Round uh, round three. Dave, what have you got for us? Um, okay, so my fact is about a computer game called A Hyrule Fantasy. Or rather, that's the original Japanese name given for The Legend of Zelda. Now, there's going to be a plethora of micro facts about Zelda in this, but... Uh, just me. No, 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 I was going in for a harmony. Thanks for leaving me waving out there like a dick in the breeze. I love the fact that you're I like the fact you're dick waving in the breeze. When you first started that, I'm like going, what the fuck are you people? And then and then you start getting into it. No, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, uh, that's a real shame for someone who's such a big Zelda fan. But anyway, so the game's creator, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, who also was the brain behind Mario, used to take long walks in the countryside around his house when he was a child, and on one of these walks he came across a cave opening, and supposedly, after running back to go get a lantern and building up enough courage to go and explore it, he went in. He says days like this in his memory was so exciting 
that you know many years later when he designed the or helped design the Zelda games, he wanted to incorporate that sense of wonderment and excitement into the games. And it also explains why in the Legends of Zelda, A Link to the Past, the lantern is the first item you get in the game. You know what Mario's original name was? Jumpman. In the old arcade game Donkey Kong. Can anyone tell me what the first Pokemon was? On on the game? Uh, what what what? In, there, in there'll the, be a in, twist in, to this fact. It's not gonna be the one in you think the po- so go ahead. In the Pokedex. Bulbasaur, no, no, Charmander, no, no, no. Squirtle, Pikachu, mm. Diglett. No, I was gonna Cat's say that there are arguments that Bulbasaur is number one and Bulbasaur Pikachu is the most famous. Chronologically correct. Not chronologically, Pokedexily, whatever yeah. that order is, yeah. yeah. So he's the first one in the list of all the lists. Yeah. But the first one added to the game was Rhydon, some big rocky thing. You know all those statues? Don't you? Yeah, I'm just sorry. There are, you know all the statues yeah. that are around and in the gyms and everywhere else? Mm. They're all bloody Rhydons. Yeah, yeah well, actually. Yeah. yeah, now you think about it, you go, hang on. And it's because it was the first thing that was added and it was, it was listed as number one and they put the order of the Pokedex, it was different to the order it was added in. Anyway, sorry, I was looking at weird Pokemon facts yesterday. Strange. Whilst I was researching my one, I came across with um, a really fucking funny thing. And it's in one of the later games, I think it's the Windward Sword. Mm. There's an enemy that makes a wah, 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 noise when you hit it. Wind Waker. I think. I know, I know that one. Mm, yeah, the little green blobby thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Slow that down by 50% and it's two Japanese men having a full-on argument. And it's fucking hilarious. It sounds I didn't know truly you know. hilarious. Like seriously, I, I'm not even going to be as horribly racist as I'm trying to impersonate it. Yeah. Go and watch it. It's it's fucking funny as hell. Dave's, okay. Dave's full of Zelda facts today. Yeah, I like that. Can you tell? I was researching last night. Yeah. Uh, cool, so round three, Mr. Legends and Good Yarns. Are we going to go with Max's Haunted Handyman, Laura's Banned Books for Kids, or Dave's Legend of Good Gameplay? Dave, who are you going with? I, I, I think the banned books. Creepy but Doll's, creepy doll's going to kill you. Just saying. It's not creepy a threat. Laura's going to kill you. <laughs> That's not a threat. <laughs> that one was. That one was. That was <laughs> she threat. will kill you. With little dolls. Forcibly inserted somewhere <laughs> about your purse. <laughs> Not the little dolls. No. Do you want the big dolls? Yeah, no. <laughs> Actually. Cool. Laura, who are you going with? Dave, because I heart Zelda. Max? It was going to be Laura, because I think her fact is very interesting. Mm. However, again, I will say video games. I video games. I video games. You, you video heart games. video games. Video games. You can't say that because you're a man. Video, 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 video. Video, video games. I have to say, they're all really good facts. I, I like your creepiness about your fact. I like your hilarity in general thing about yours. And I love Zelda because I've been playing it since I was... I think it was the first game I got on the N64. Okay, um, and yeah, I'm going to vote for Laura. Oh. So, that's a win for Laura and Dave. Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs>